Hey there, welcome to Bite Size Piano. In this lesson, I'm gonna give you five chord progressions that all sound a little bit emotional. I'm gonna talk briefly about the theory of them and where a couple of them are actually from, which actually inspired this tutorial. So this lesson is for anyone who's maybe interested in songwriting or you'd like to try writing something that has a little bit more emotion involved and sort of something to pull at your heartstrings. These chord progressions are relatively straightforward. There are lots of other videos I'm going to link to in the description below which are supplementary and complementary to this one it goes a bit more in depth about like chord theory as well so go and check those out after this one if you would like to learn more so let's go to the piano and i will show you the first chord progression so the first chord progression then um, is actually in a minor key i've just chosen these keys at random so i will show you the diatonic chords you can apply this to a different key signature so the one i'm using is a minor and the diatonic chords we're using is a first the seventh and the fourth chords of a minor and the last chord actually has the sharpened sixth included so it gives it a nice turn so i'll just demonstrate it first so i'll just play it quite simply i'll just play the chord so we have a minor which is the first chord of A minor. <laughs> and then we have G major, which is the seventh chord of A minor. And then we're gonna play D major. So obviously F sharp isn't in the key of, isn't in the scale of A minor. So what we've actually done is borrowed or altered a note. I've done a whole video on borrowed and altered notes. They make chord progressions sound loads more interesting. So I've linked that down below for you to go and check out after this video. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We've made the F into an F sharp instead. And we've played, instead of playing D minor, it gives us D major. It's a very similar chord progression, if not the same chord progression, to ICU, which is the theme from Avatar, um, composed by the late James Horner. Remember to, like I say in all of my chord bass videos, pretty much, I sound like a broken record now. If you play around with inversions as well to give you different voicings, don't just play everything in root position because um, you'll be missing out on a whole load of interesting, you know, like upper melodies and voices and things like that. So that was the first one. So in a minor key, it's the first, seventh, and the fourth chord, and that altered, sharpened sixth. So the second one then, we're actually gonna do in the key of A major. And I've actually taken this from To Build a Home by the Cinematic Orchestra. I think it's this, this is a perfect example of a really emotional chord progression, and it's all major chords. And they're all specifically major chords played in second inversion. In a major key, they're the diatonic chords which is the four the first and the fifth so in the key of a major the fourth chord is D major the first chord is a major the fifth chord is E major now if I play all of those in second inversion again encouraging you to play around with inversions so let's play everything in second inversion so if I just add the root notes in my left hand so we have D major a major and obviously you can divide notes however you like between the hands So no borrow 
altered notes here, no altered notes, just simply the three most commonly used chords when something is in a major key. Fourth, the first, and the fifth. Probably the most simple chord progression in this list. So again, you can apply those diatonic chords to a different key signature as well. If you don't know what diatonic chords are, I'm not going to explain them really in this lesson. I've done a whole separate lesson which I've linked below for you. So the third one then is another one We're going back to a minor key and I'm actually going to pick G minor. The diatonic chords we need for this one, this actually includes a seventh chord. We have the first chord, the sixth, which is going to be a major seven, the first chord again, and then the fourth chord, which has the sharpened sixth borrowed altered note in there. So in the key of G minor then, those chords that I just listed there, so we'll have G minor. Okay, I'm just playing the root notes in my left hand. And then is, it's like playing G minor again but with E flat in the left hand. So E flat G, B flat D is E flat major seven. Back to G minor. And then C major. So the fourth diatonic chord of G minor is actually a C minor because in the key of G minor, we have an E flat, which is the sixth note. But we're gonna sharpen that and make that into an E natural instead. So it gives a more interesting, more of like an uplifting effect at the end. So you'll notice that we're using the chords, like the first example, we're incorporating the, the end chord of the chord progression. That's the chord that has the sharpened sixth. So again, so we have G minor. try and make this sound a little bit more interesting. I'm going to play it a little bit higher. to the key of A minor. So the diatonic chords we're going to use is the first, the sixth, the third with an add nine, and the seventh which has a suspended fourth in there. So that gives us in the key of A minor these chords. So the first which is A minor, A C E, the, uh, the sixth which is F major, F, A, C, so this is just all in root position. <laughs> it's hard to stretch. A C add nine, which is the third chord. So that's basically C, E, G, and then we're adding the ninth note at the top of the voice, which is a D. And then we have a G sus four, which is G, C, and D seventh chord and then that resolves into just G major. So again we have A minor, let's play around with inversions, F major, C add nine and then Jesus four resolves into G. So if I play that with a little bit more pizzazz, taking a really standard popular chord progression and just tweaking it a little bit just with the use again of inversions and the add nine and then the G sus four makes that one sound just a lot more 
emotional. So the last one then, this fifth one, and we're going back to a major key. So this is going to be an E flat major. So this includes the end chord being turned into a minor, basically. And it has a really nice, probably one of the most effective things you can do to make it sound extra emotional. So the diatonic chords we're going to use is the first, the third, the fourth, the minor fourth, and then the minor fourth with the sixth. <laughs> so I'll explain what that means now. So the first chord we need is the first chord, which in the key of E flat major is E flat major. Third chord of E flat major, which is the next one in the progression, is G minor. So G, B flat and D. And then the fourth chord in the scale of E flat major is A flat major. So this is the chord we're going to alter A, C and E flat. We're going to make it into the minor, so we're going to flatten the third. The C becomes a C flat, not a B, a C flat. And then we're going to add an F onto that, so the sixth. So this becomes an A flat minor six. And that resolves nicely into the root again, into E flat major. So again, that's E flat major. quite a nice way to end <laughs> a song. So if I play around with inversions now, second version of E flat major, G, root position still, root position. So really, I think that sounds quite nice. I only used one inversion there, which is the E flat major. Do something like, you keep everything a bit more local. progression sounds nice and emotional at the end. We've got that interesting variation on the A flat chord on the fourth chord. So you could try, you can apply those diatonic chords a different major key if you wanted to. If you're unsure about what rhythm patterns to use, obviously I've not spoken about the rhythm patterns, I have a few videos in my chords playlist which I've linked down below all about different chord rhythms, how to make your chord progressions sound a bit more interesting and rhythms that are quite popular that you'd benefit from knowing. So I hope you have enjoyed all of these and that you're gonna maybe try some out in your own chord progressions, in your own compositions, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye. So that's the end of this video. If you would like to leave a request, leave them in the comments section below of this video. I've also left some videos here that I think you might like, so go and check those out as well. I also have a course. Visit bitesizepianocourse.co.uk and you can enrol and start learning how to read music. I'll see you in the next video.